Shalom, shalom and welcome. Welcome to the White Rose Family Channel. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Simonai, and these are the words I'm compelled to present before an awakening set apart nation. To those who are drawn by the Almighty Creator, the Almighty Yahuwah, who is the beginning and the end, the Aleph and the Ta, he who is spirit everywhere at all times, who manifests his word in the person of Yahushua. His word, no trinity. When we say Yahushua, we're talking about the manifestation of the word that Yahuwah choose to communicate with us by demonstration, by walking among us, the sacrifice, the resurrection, and that Yahuwah sent his set apart spirit in Yahushua's name as written in John 14, 26. And I speak of Yahuwah drawing us to Yahushua echoing the sentiments of John 6, 44. Before I get started in this segment, I want to say this, that the views expressed in these messages do not necessarily reflect the views of the owners, managers, shareholders, and or sponsors of this media platform. With that said, let's get started. Harvest times. My brothers and sisters, there's so much we take for granted, but we will discover in these end times Wisdom comes by paying attention to what the set apart spirit is revealing to us and expecting from us as a result of that revelation. Discerning what must be done, what will be done is crucial to us lining up and becoming unified and set apartness. Harvest times, my brothers and sisters. Allow me to present these questions as we get into this subject of harvest times. What is a harvest? Are you aware of the different types of harvest? Do you believe harvest times are good times? Something that needs to be spoken of? Come with me, my brothers and sisters. Let's visit. Matthew 9, 35 through 37, through 38, my mistake. Matthew 9, 35 through 38 read, And Yahushua went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their congregations and proclaiming the good news of the reign and healing every disease and every bodily weakness among the people. And having seen the crowds, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered as sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said to his taught ones, the harvest truly is great, but the workers are few. Pray then that the master of the harvest would send out workers to his harvest. I want to bring out two strong emphasis. Notice that it said in the 36th verse, he seen the crowds who was moved with compassion for them he was moved compassion for them because they were they were weary and scattered as sheep having no shepherd. Sheep desires of a shepherd, my brothers and sisters. They were weary trying to find a leader, identify a leader. And he lets us know when the harvest is truly great, meaning that there's a lot of individuals who wait, who awaits instructions from him, who awaits fellowship and guidance and righteousness and comfort and joy coming from him. There's a lot of people desires of a shepherd. And there are shepherds who desires to be perfected and set apart so that they can be an effective shepherd. But notice he say, pray then that the master of the harvest would send out workers to the harvest. You see, the master sending workers to the harvest. There's a big difference, Yasharal, with the master sending workers to the harvest versus you just deciding on your own to jump out there unequipped, unlearned, still on milk. Let's consider the matter of workers. Did you notice the word send out in Matthew 9, 38? Do you believe that the Almighty Father will send you out unprepared, ill-equipped, no, my brothers and sisters. He will present the life in the scriptures that we have so that we fully understand 
and know to continually lean on him for guidance, direction, and when and how to impart on brothers and sisters what is necessary for the growing of a set-apart nation. A harvest, my brothers and sisters. Now, how many of you look at this definition as a har these definition of a harvest, nothing more, nothing less? One is the process a process or period of gathering in crops, helping with the uh, harvest. Another talks about to remove or extract something from culture or from living or recently deceased bodies, especially for transplanting. Harvest. Yes, we've heard of harvesting organs. We've heard of harvesting fruit, vegetables, grain, and so forth. But how many of us has given thought to what this means and how it affects us regarding today, regarding growing and learning today? I want to also share and present these words for you to consider Leviticus 19, 9 through 11. Leviticus 19, 9 through 11 says, And when you reap the harvest of your land, do not completely reap the corners of your field or gather the gleaning of your harvest. Do not glean your vineyard or gather every grape of your vineyard. Leave them for the poor and stranger. I am Yahuwah, your Almighty One. Do not steal, do not lie, do not deceive one another. You see, there were brothers and sisters who would use every excuse to not obey his instructions of leaving some for the poor. They'll say, well, we're poor, or it's not enough because of greed. He's saying, don't lie, don't steal. Follow my instructions when it comes to the harvest, my brothers and sisters. It is my position that when we die, our spirit is harvested from our mortal bodies and it goes to the bosom of Abraham. I want to bring this to your attention, my brothers and sisters, as it relates to the spirit being harvested. See, when it comes to harvest, how many of us have given thought to identifying if it's fruit or grain or vegetables, when to make that harvest? You see, if we're harvesting fruit that's going to be transported for days before it gets to the destination, then that harvest time will be different than fruit that's already ripe to eat right now. Or otherwise, if you wait till it's ripe to eat right now, but it takes days to get to someone else, it may be rotten. Whether it be pears or bananas are two good examples. Even apples. Harvest. It requires precision and timing to get it to those who will benefit from it. How many of us have given thought if we harvested fruit that's overripe? that that fruit could be used for compost. The seeds in it could bear more trees or vines. How many of us have given thought to the intricacies of a harvest? And I'm saying this to say, my brothers and sisters, when the scriptures talk about Yahuwah providing us with everlasting water, it's so much to get beyond just picking fruit, grain, or vegetables or identifying one who passed and Yahuwah has harvested, harvested their spirit, taking it to the bosom of Abraham or to hell, Hades, the grave. Yashrael, Yashrael, some of you might say it doesn't take much to talk about a harvest, but what work do you think must be done? Someone must be skilled on knowing when to harvest. Someone must be skilled to identify what is to be harvested. Do you know even shi uh, shining light or imparting set apart instructions to brothers or sisters 
that might be in the wrong group or a camp or walking around looking for a shepherd. That harvesting them from those strongholds, that's a harvest. Did you know that guiding a brother that's unlearned, a sister that's unlearned, guiding them into set of partners, guiding them into a more disciplined walk, guiding them from milk to meat, that's a harvest process. Harvesting from them from one state of being or mind or spirit to another. You see, there's so much connectivity and so much to learn regarding harvest, but we're so busy taking it for granted. Let me ask you, my brothers and sisters, would you be satisfied if someone handed you one grape? Do you know there are brothers and sisters that will say, I understand what you're talking about. I got it right away and won't listen to any more in this post. To me, that's like someone eating one grape or two grapes. Not eating enough grapes to understand and identify the flavor of the grape, the taste of the grape, the nutrition value that it provides. Not even giving thought to whether collecting grapes, they can give some other grapes. Fruit. In other words, are you listening to enough to strengthen you and to share with others? Harvest time, my brothers and sisters, is here. What do you think is your responsibility as it relates to harvest? Come with me. Allow me to present these words. In Ecclesiastes 3, verse 21, it says, Who knows the spirit of the sons of men, which goes upward in the spirit of the beast, which goes down to the earth? The spirit of the sons of men, which goes upward. Does this identify Yahuwah, harvesting our spirits, going up, upward? Or the wicked one spirit going downward? Pray and see. Does this confirm such? Come with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. For it reads, Remember him before the silver cord is loose, or the golden bowl is broken, or the jar shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the well. And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to the Almighty One who gave it. Is this a harvesting of the spirit from my bodies, my brothers and sisters? Come with me to Luke chapter 16, verse 22 through 23. And it came to be that the beggar died and was carried by the messengers to the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man also died and was buried. And while suffering tortures in the grave or Sheol, or some would say hell, having lifted up his eyes, he saw Abraham far away, Eleazar, or some would say Lazarus, in his bosom. Transition times, my brothers and sisters. Harvest magnifies the need to recognize that there are transition times ahead. In the midst of all that will unfold, never forget these words. Deuteronomy 8.3 8, 3 says, And he humbled you and let you suffer Hunger fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know to make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah. It's also echoed, and that, that was Deuteronomy 8, 3. It's also echoed in Matthew 4, 4. But he answered said to him, it has been written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah. How many of us can identify words from Yahuwah that's related to harvest, that's related to breaking strongholds? How many of us? Let us remember to gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, my brothers and sisters. It begins with fearing the Almighty Yahuwah. And this is important for in these final days, this final exodus, there will be a harvest from communities, from camps, 
of brothers and sisters wandering, trying to identify the shepherd or being strengthened to be a stronger shepherd to fulfill the tasks that are given us by the Almighty Father. Harvest time is now, my brothers and sisters. Harvest time means work to be done. Harvest time means we must be able to identify when, where, how. For what purpose are we to harvest the things that are made known to us? Harvest time is a time of identifying the mature compared to those still on milk and offering them meat. Harvest time comes with responsibility. Yes, you're all. The time is now to know the life in these words as I gradually come to an end in this segment. Proverbs 1, 7 say, The fear of you who is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. So in harvest, my brothers and sisters, let us begin to know what it means, what must be done, what's expected of us. Let us not take it for granted as just grabbing some fruit and eating it. Let us be mindful of the seeds that are produced and how they can bring about more growth. Let us be mindful of the seeds produced from a spiritual to a brother or sister, which are able to grow stronger and pass some of that strength and knowledge on to another brother or sister. Let us not despise the wisdom and the discipline that it requires for us to pay attention to all the dynamics of harvest. Proverbs 19, and, and we will gain that knowledge by fearing Yahuwah. Proverbs 19 says the fear of you who is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the set apart one is understanding. You just want to know a little bit about harvest or well, all the details. Missing out, my brothers and sisters, may cause us to ignore and take for granted the seeds from the fruit that we harvest. Take for granted the seeds that need to be set apart to grow more grain or vegetables. In harvest, there is balance, my brothers and sisters. And in balance, we find the things we need to grow stronger physically, naturally, and spiritually. I want to also read Proverbs 14, 26, which says, In the fear of Yahuwah, a strong trust in his children have a place of refuge. In these days ahead, my brothers and sisters, there's no doubt in my mind that as things get intense, we will look for refuge. Some of us will find permanent refuge until we face physical death, and some of us will find refuge in being gathered with the set-apart ones as we are gathered from the four corners of the earth. Refuge will come one way, shape, or another. And did you know if we look at it shallow, in a shallow way, we'll miss that to die in Yahushua is even refuge, for that refuge will be in the bosom of Abraham. Yasharal, oh Yasharal, harvest times. Don't take these words for granted. Don't walk past the fruit, the grain, the vegetables. Don't walk past the things that should be harvested, the things that will bring about freedom from strongholds, the things that will strengthen us. Do not neglect the attributes of the things that can and will be harvested. And let us pass this information on to one another. Let us strengthen one another, my brothers and sisters. If ever time to understand harvest, that time is now. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, stay tuned. There are details and processes that will become clear to the discerning and the obedient. Consider subscribing, my brothers and sisters, sharing, liking, these messages. Consider contributing. My cash tag is White Rose Family. Cash tag White Rose Family. Consider connecting, sharing your skills, your resources, your abilities. Make it known. Do you know as things ramp up, if you have, let's just give you an example. Let's say you have a lot of cars and things ramp up and people need to be moved. And out of this lot, of, let's just say 10 cars, and we discover only three people know how to drive because we took for granted that there was a bunch of cars, not asking the right questions of how do we teach others to prepare them to drive, not harvesting answers 
to questions that are necessary when it comes to how much fuel do we need to get us how far and how would we prepare ourselves if we're going to be on a ship for a week or longer? How do we harvest the information to fill our minds and body in preparation for what's ahead? Yashara, oh Yashara, do not just take the word harvest for granted. Look at all the dynamics and look, like, look at the endless flow of information that can be gathered to strengthen us, to equip us for what lies ahead. Let's come together, oh Yashara. I have no doubt there will be a coming together. I have no doubt there will be unity. The question is, will you be among the ranks of those disciplined and refined to fulfill this final exodus, to be strong and die for Yahushua's name, to lead or speak the last and final words before destruction hit you or another or others. Pray and discern, O Yashara, all that is necessary, for there is so much to learn, so much to get, so much to do, O Yashara. Let us discern and embrace what the Spirit is saying to us. On that note, I pray that you continually encourage. Be encouraged, O Yashara. There's much to learn, much to receive, much to give, much to do. I leave you with these words. Shalom, my brother, my sister, my family. Shalom.